Hello, in this video I am going to show you how to connect up your Xbox Series X or Series X controller which they call in the Xbox wireless controller to your Windows machine so you can use it on the EPSXE emulator wired and wireless. I will create videos on how to do this on a different OS and on different emulators as well and I'll do it for PS5 controller when I get that. It's beginning later today, the console not coming out for a week coming out in the US today so for I'm guessing for some reason for that reason they're shipping the games and the controllers out for today it's, it's strange it just doesn't make sense obviously I can connect it to a computer but apart from that I can't really do much with it but okay on to this if you want to connect it via wire so wired option you'll need a wire with USB type C on one end and either USB type A like mine or USB type C depending on what your computer has this is really simple to do it's the easiest option if you go to game set up USB game controllers and if you plug this in to your computer before I plug it into the Xbox I just want to say this video is for educational purposes not condoning piracy so yeah the other thing if you I've only found this on the wireless option. If you are on wireless, go to update. Make sure you update your Windows to the latest versions. Click check for updates and download any updates. I found it doesn't work wireless if you don't. Okay, so if I plug this in, it vibrates, the light will come on. I'm still just waiting for the light. Strange why it hasn't det 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 detected it. Let me just disconnect and reconnect. Okay, that is strange. Let me just try a different port. Okay, there we go. It will appear right there now. If we go to properties. All the buttons work fine except for the Xbox button has never worked but the share button doesn't work because it detects it as an Xbox one controller they may update Windows to accommodate that button it's not really much of an issue so if you want to go the wireless route if you want to go down the wireless route you will need Bluetooth and you will get yeah, you'll need Bluetooth so you can even just oops, detected it I think yeah, it's just connected it you know wirelessly like that so synced it up so if we go to bluetooth and other device settings i'm actually going to remove it so you'll appear here somewhere and that should be it so that has disappeared so you can either sync it up that way if you just connect it and you'll be able to sync it up that's one way the other way is to either go to devices and printers and go to add a device up here or go to add Bluetooth uh, or other device and keep this sync button by the USB-C port pressed. So if you keep that pressed for a few seconds, this Xbox logo will start flashing rapidly. Go to Bluetooth, your device will appear here momentarily. Uh, it's gonna wait. Mm. Okay, there we go click it and it's connected and if I go to here just waiting for the controller to appear there we go it detects it as a six axis 16 button gamepad with hat switch it's the same thing so if we go to properties again you know it works fine the share button doesn't work but that's the same as before so now we're all good to actually you know connect this up to our EPSXE emulator Go to config, go to game pads, either port one or port two, and feel free to do you know extra pads if you want to for multi tap, doesn't matter. Go to pad one, and now we can start syncing everything up. I'm going to clear everything, and you can select digital where you won't have you know the analog sticks. You can still map the analog sticks on the controller, you just won't have them in the emulator, if you know what I mean and but if i go to let's say dual shock yeah let's go to dual shock instead of dual analog dual shock okay so 
if we do L1 and L2, if I do R1 and R2, R2, R1, and then if I do the face buttons, it'd be awkward with one hand. There we go. Now let's do the D-pad. Again, you don't have to map it in a you know pretty much a direct fashion. You can map it however you want. That's one of the beauties of an emulator. It's map it however you want. Okay, so now for up and down, the left analog stick. And for right. And you just need to I think do up and then left and you'll detect it. And then for the right analog stick, that is the x-axis. So if I do left, and if I do up, it detects it that the down is just the opposite of that. And you feel free to mess around with these. These are just settings. And over here, the analog stick appears. Right click in. And left click in. There we go. And obviously you can, you know, change the, you know, vibration stuff. Feel free to, you know, do that. That's totally up to you. But you can just leave that all as default. Click OK. You're all good to go now. So if I run a game, so if I go to run ISO, and if I go to my games, EPSXE, go to ISO, I will load my trusted Crash Bandicoot. This is always the go-to game. I'm gonna click Escape, see if I've got a load state. I do, which just takes me to the main menu. I've turned the volume down, otherwise you would hear this. So we can move. Um, what did that do? Or did I just wait too long to actually press it? Let me have a look. Hmm, that's weird, it's not detecting it. Let's quit, go back to config, go to game pads. And let's actually exit. Let's just reopen this. Mm, weird why it wasn't actually. Go to port one. It is that, that is all good here. Oh, yeah, start and select. Forgot about activating, putting them in. And that shouldn't really make a difference, but let's have a look again. Go to load state. Okay, so the Dan arrows are working. Let's go to gamepad. Oh, can't actually do anything in here while I've got it like this. You know, I feel like I've just accidentally mapped the wrong control for down. It's probably what it is, usually what it is. So if I go to down, yeah, that, yeah, that's what I've done. I've put right. That, yes, that's what it is. So up left no left down and right uh, so make sure i've got all these correct x circle triangle and square okay square wasn't right either had a few things again that was my mistake you, you know it's a lot easier when you're actually looking at the controller so you probably won't have that issue. I'm gonna click escape, go to load state, load state, and there we go. 
yeah, I'm very confident this would work now. Go to there, click A again on for Insanity Beach, and we can you know start playing. Well, we will be able to in a second. Uh, and we can move around with the analog stick because that's being mapped as well. So yeah, we can move around, press square. Let me play the first level. I can't move right now. I, I've just mapped it incorrectly. So I'll just continue using the analog stick. Again, that is a problem with what I've done more than anything else. Uh, I want that Aku Aku mask. So that is going to be really helpful very, very shortly when we go. Ooh. Yes, I've got one crab into the other. Destroy both the boxes that we could destroy. Yeah, this game is much better with D-pad than analog stick. Well, it's what it was originally designed for in mind. Now, what am I doing? What am I doing? Just keep going. Just keep going. Don't dilly-dally about. This Aku Aku is literally about to disappear. Yeah, I think I've got it all. Let me just go back around. There'll be a few turtles to destroy. I'll get that one fruit on the way back. There's one, actually, there should only be those. And yes, there will these. Let's go over here, make sure I've got all the boxes, and we're all good to go. Not that I can really do much now, depending on where the box will be. If we haven't destroyed any, they're all gone. Oh, yeah. There we go. So completed the first level of Crash Bandicoot using the Xbox Series X controller. All boxes, so I get the gem. Da da, -da as you would say, and I can press X. So click Escape. That is it. That is how you connect up your what they call the Xbox wireless controller. So the controller that comes with the Xbox Series X or Series X to your PC using a wired or wireless option, so you can. You know, play it on the EPS XEM later. If you have any questions, feel free to pop me a message. And as usual, I look forward to seeing you in the next video.